So the NHL Network posted their top 10 goalies heading into next season. Where does Jake Ottinger fall on that list? Plus, why I believe Otter will have a career year in Dallas. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer 105 through the fan. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. My hot take heading into next season, Stars fans, is Jake Ottinger will be a Vesna finalist. And that may not be a hot take, but I'm dubbing this the year of the otter. He establishes himself as a goalie that can play amongst the best in the NHL. And the NHL network put out a list of the top 10 goalies heading into next season. And everybody loves a list, obviously. So we have to dissect it. And I would make a few changes to it, but before we get to it, go to the comments below and share with me where you believe Otter falls within the top 10. No cheating, Locked On Stars listeners. We need some integrity down in the comments. Let me know below, and I'll tell you a bit later on on today's episode, which is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. So visit FanDuel.com to get started. So I've been thinking about Mr. Jake Ottinger this past week, and that's per usual. I think about the stars, and sometimes it blossoms into a segment here on Locked on Stars. And he had a real funky season. A lot of inconsistencies, a lot of ups and downs. He had to deal with an injury midway through the year, and he posted his worst season statistically in his career and still found himself as an all-star, which I still find a bit odd. But I have this feeling that Jake Gottinger is going to have a career year next season. And there are a few reasons why. Not a ton of them are tangible, but stay with me, okay? Stars fans, stay with me. First, it's a contract year. Every year, there's a handful of guys heading into their final year of their contract, and they explode. Look at Sam Reinhart. He's a great example from last season with Florida and just went on a complete tear, and he got paid for it with the Panthers. I believe Tage Thompson a few years ago as well in Buffalo had himself a heck of a season in the final year of his contract, and Otter is already motivated internally. He wants to be one of the best goalies in the world. And this is a year for him to do it and get paid for it and possibly find himself within the top five highest paid goalies within the NHL. So I think that's a motivation for him, number one. Number two is, and maybe this is a bit more tangible for some of you, is I went ahead and compared his first four seasons in the NHL with some of the generation's best goalies in the last decade. And this is the first, this will be the the fourth full season for Otter. Uh, It'll be his fifth year overall, but there's been some weird years with the COVID season and all that. But this will be the fourth year of him being the number one goaltender in Dallas. But I went ahead and, and compared his first four years, about 200 games worth with Carey Price, Mark andre Fleury, and Andre Vasilevsky because those are goaltenders that were some of the best in their generation. And I wanted to compare those with Otter and maybe we can get some insight or we can infer how Otter's career will go here in the next few seasons based off some of these guys. So you look at Carey Price in his first 200 games or so. That fourth year, his fourth full season, he had a career year up to that point. 38 wins, 28 losses, a 923 save percentage, and a 2.35 
goals against average. His high save percentage was actually his rookie year. He posted a 920, but he had a 2.56 goals against average. So he dropped that down to 2.35 and even improved his save percentage to 923. And I would argue it's harder to move your save percentage from 920 to 923 than it is from, let's say, 900 to 920. Uh, that that can be a bit more difficult. And then after that, Carey Price, of course, went on to have a heck of a career. He actually finished fifth in the Vesna voting that fourth season in 72 games. And Montreal was still sort of finding themselves at that point. And then Carey Price went on to be one of the generation's best. And he dealt with some injuries, of course, later on in his career. He won a Vesna in 2014-15, where he had a 933 save percentage and a 1.96 goals against average. I mean, that is completely dominant. And we can all agree, I think a lot of Stars fans would concur that Otter has the ability, the ceiling to be a top three netminder in the NHL. But he hasn't reached that quite yet. He hasn't reached his potential. And can he do it consistently? Because we haven't seen it on a night in and night out basis as of yet. But you look at other goaltenders like Marc-Andre Fleury in his first four years, his fourth season, right? 921 save percentage, 2.33 goals against average, by far the best of his career up to that point. He had below 900 save percentage in his first two seasons in Pittsburgh. He finally posted above 900 in 06 07, and he played in 65 games, albeit 07 08 was that weird lockout year. So he played in 35 games. But I mean, those are really, really strong numbers. And then, of course, Mock Andre Fleury went on this run with Pittsburgh, won himself uh, a couple of cups, and uh, actually won a Vesna in 2021, uh, not too long ago. He- he's been a-, a goaltender that has certainly aged really well. But it seems like that fourth season. And we talk about this with defensemen a lot where it seems like that 250 game mark, once you get around 250 games in the NHL, then you truly know how to play defense. And just comparing this with other goaltenders, it feels like 200 games is where some of these net minders really find their groove. And I would probably attest to that because look, you come into the NHL and maybe you get off to a really nice start, but eventually teams get the book on you. Teams are studying where to beat you, where are your weaknesses, and teams will adjust to that. And we certainly saw that last season, and I'll get into that a bit later on in terms of where Otter can improve into next season. But now goaltenders have to adjust after there has been a book on them. And maybe that's where players, netminders like Marc-Andre Fleury and Carey Price seem to thrive after adjusting. Vasilevsky, I just want to throw one more in there because the past eight years, he's been arguably the best within the NHL. 16-17 was a year where he was sort of splitting it with Ben Bishop at the time. Uh, went 23-17, had a 9-17 save percentage and a 2.61 goals against average. But you go to that next year, this is his fourth year, by the way, fourth sort of full season. 65 games, he was 44-17-3, and 9.20 save percentage, and a 2.62 goals against average, and he had eight shutouts, and he finished third, <laughs> which is uh, pretty remarkable in the Vesna after having eight shutouts, w- which is incredible. And then, of course, he goes on that run, al- uh, a run along with Tampa, and they were a very good team. And look, uh, these goaltenders had really good teams in front of them, and Jake Ottinger has a really, really nice team in front of him. So I think we can sort of make an inference that maybe this is a year, if if we had to put an educated guess on it, where he has an incredible season and he puts together one of these years where it's not deniable that he's a top five goalie in the NHL. And he finished really, really strong. He had a really nice postseason Although each round he sort of had a game to forget, but you look at goal save above expected in the playoffs. He was third amongst goalies. He was behind Shesterkin 
and Swayman, and you compare that to his regular season, which was pretty poor in a lot of aspects, he was 38 at 1.9. Like, not very good, to be completely honest, at all. And I don't foresee that happening again. I just think it was a really, really funky year. So I'm really encouraged uh, about Jake Ottinger. And I'll be honest, I have always been high on him. Even last year for a large part of the season when he was struggling, I wasn't too concerned about it. I just felt like he was going to find it eventually. And that last month, he really, really found his groove. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you he doesn't need to be better because he needs to be that number one guy if he wants to earn his contract, so to speak, and get paid as a number one netminder because what he gets paid could certainly decide what Dallas looks like in the future, right? Cap space is a real thing. Otter, uh, excuse me, Ben's coming off the books, which certainly will help. <laughs> um, even though I think he'll stay with Dallas, but it will be a, a pay cut, of course. So um, I'm really intrigued about Jake Ottinger this next season. It's the year of the Otter, okay? I'm dubbing it the year of the Otter. All righty, let's get to that list put out by the NHL Network. The top 10 goalies in the NHL. Where does Jake Ottinger fall? I'll tell you in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked On Stars is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Hey, Locked On Stars fans, thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen, head over to Locked On NHL. Locked On NHL provides you with a national perspective on all things NHL each and every day. National experts and local insight on every team on the league. It's available on YouTube. It's wherever you get your podcast. They're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Thank you so much for the love and support over the last month or so throughout this off season. I know it can be a bit monotonous every single day with some of these episodes, but I promise I'm trying to keep it fresh, trying to keep it entertaining every single day because we're all just waiting for training camp to begin and things start to uh, start to ramp up. But NHL Network saved us here. They put out their list of uh, of top 10 goalies. And everybody loves a list, right? Uh, you can make a list for everything. And uh, I uh, I liked it for, for the most part. I'll go ahead and list off the, the first 10 for you. Igor Shosturkin comes in at number one. Not a ton of arguments there. Connor Hellebuck at number two. Vasilevsky, three. Jeremy Swayman, four. Sorokin, five. Dimko, six. Bobrovsky, seven. Jake Ottinger, eight. Saros nine, and then Linus Olmark comes in at number 10. Of course, he will now play in Ottawa instead of being the partner with Jeremy Swayman. Not a ton of gripes with this list. I would switch a few around. I think Bobrovsky should be in the top three. I would switch Vasilevsky and Bobrovsky. Probably put Vasilevsky around five. Um, I think Demko could get bumped up a, a bit more, but not a not a ton of concerns with this list. I will say, I think Jake Ottinger is perfect at number eight. I think that is very fair. You could make the argument Saros should be ahead of him. I could see that if you flip flop them, I wouldn't be. I I wouldn't have too much of an argument there. Uh, Vasilevsky didn't have a great season, but look, if if you look at the body of work. He, of course, is certainly probably within the top 10, but right now, because this is a right now list, I think I go Demko a bit higher. I, I know he's coming off that injury, but from what he did this past season, he would have won the Vesna if, if he stayed healthy. 
um, in, in my opinion. Helen Buck and Shesterkin, of course, one of the uh, the the top three or a couple of the the top net miners in the game. So Ottinger has to get to the top five, right? That's where we're hoping Otter can find himself. And it's very plausible if he puts together a fantastic season. So I'm curious, do you agree with number eight? Would you have him even lower on this list? I think you can make an argument for a number of players. If I had to re-rank it, I'd probably go Shesterkin, Hellebuck, Bobrovsky, Swayman. I would take Demko. Then, then, then I would go Vasilevsky, Sorokin, Otter, Saros, Olmark. I think that would be my revised top 10. And even then, I could certainly see myself putting some uh, uh, other other net minders uh, above other, others. And, and maybe Vasilevsky, it, it's a bit harsh, but he, he did have a, a bit of a down year. So I'm thinking right now, since it since this is what the list is for, the top 10 goalies in the NHL. Share your list below with me as well. Is Otter too high or too low? I feel like eight is a, is a perfect, perfect spot for him. It just, it feels like uh, it, it makes sense. And he certainly wasn't a top 10 goalie statistically last regular season, right? I can go through a ton of them for you. I listed off to you the goals above save expected. He was at, at 1.9. Goal save uh, above uh, expected per 60. He was down in the 50s uh, in this one. He came in at 46, actually, at 0.037. He wasn't within the top 10 in save percentage at 9.05. And goals against average was 2.72. It was a down year for Jake, which I still think is encouraging that he's kind of considered a top 10 goalie in the NHL. And I alluded to this a bit earlier, but I think many would subscribe to the fact that he has the potential to be a top three goalie in the NHL, but can he actually reach that? Right. Um, and, and maybe, and maybe I'm a bit overestimating his talent because it's beyond Helen Buck and Shesterkin. They look like, uh, I mean, Helen Buck is going to be one of the best uh, in his generation. Shesterkin looks to be that um, as well. So maybe I'm not putting him in the right perspective, but uh, I, I think there's no question he can live up to that. And we've seen it, right? We've seen it in spurts, but to be considered one of the best, you have to be consistent. You have to be available, number one, and you have to be consistent night in and night out. And for the reasons I mentioned in the first segment, I think this could be a big year for him, a a big year to really establish himself. And we're going to get into this Sean Shapiro article from D Magazine in the next segment about Otter wanting to become one of the best in the world and where he can improve heading into next season. Because there was a book on Jake Ottinger last season, and many of you caught this. I remember constantly rolling through comments last season, scrolling through. And many of you mentioned this. I have some statistics to back that up for you. And some of them were alarming. So I'm going to share that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sporting like we want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. This summer has actually been incredible when it comes to sports. We've had the Euros. We've had the Copa. Summer Olympics are continuing to go on. It's been an absolute blast. Plus, you have Major League Baseball on every single night. When you're on the couch and join the ball game, get in on the action this summer with FanDuel. Head over to FanDuel.com. Start making the most out of your summer. You can download the app. It's free and available. It's on the App Store. It is on the Google Play Store. Go over to FanDuel.com. Start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Sean Shapiro put out an article 
on D Magazine a couple of days ago, and it's really fantastic. I encourage you to go read it in its entirety. I picked a few pieces for you, some of the more important ones that I certainly wanted to touch on on today's episode. So he sort of goes into with the four nations face off coming up and Otter wanting to be one of the, the best goalies in the world. But first he has to be the, the best goaltender in his country, in America. And he hasn't established that quite yet. It, it'll be an uphill climb considering Connor Hellenbuck, who is the reigning Vesna trophy winner. He's had a, a fantastic uh, career. Obviously, Jeremy Swayman has to be thrown in there. He's been incredible. Thatcher Demko, who's coming off an injury. Those are three goaltenders uh, that I think most people would take over Ottinger at, at this point in time. So he does have some work to do if he wants to be considered one of the best in the game. And he goes into how he was selected to an all-star game for the first time, even though he had a really, really tough year. and. I want to put into perspective some of the bad starts he had, right? Some of the stinkers. And of his 54 starts, he had 10 really bad starts. And that's games with a sub 850 save percentage. So he had 10 of those throughout the season. And he also goes on to say Ottinger found footing in the postseason, but had at least one ugly game in each of the three rounds, including allowing two goals on just 10 shots in game six as Edmonton closed out Dallas in the Western conference final. So you move on in the article and then he gets into some more of the advanced statistics, which I found fascinating. I mean, really, really intriguing stuff. So during the 22, 23 season, he stopped 87% of the shots he faced high blocker and 86, uh, 86% of the ones faced high glove site, according to Instat. And many of you pointed this out and it became a theme throughout last season. He got beat high blocker a ton. A ton got beat high blocker. And it just seemed to be a spot where it was a, his Achilles heel. And I was surprised his glove side was only a, a point higher. Uh, that is a bit alarming. But it, let me break this down a bit more. So for simpler math, or let Sean Shapiro do it. <laughs> uh, Ottinger in 22-23 allowed 59 combined high glove and high blocker goals, and then allowed 85 in 23-24 in 10 fewer games. 26 more goals, high blocker, high glove this past season than in 22-23. And he goes on to mention that NHL teams scout goalies heavily. And there's a book out on Ottinger now. Plus, of the 13 goals the Oilers scored in that series, eight came on shots above the glove and blocker. So I think this really puts into perspective now where Ottinger can improve. There is an obvious weakness he had next season. So can goalie coach Jeff Reese and him come up with a game plan to remedy that? Can he adjust now to up high? And I guess this certainly isn't such a surprise. I would suspect a lot of goals on most netminders scored up high. You have to elevate to celebrate, especially with Ottinger's size. Um, he's so big in net at 6'5". He takes up a lot of room, which almost contradicts why he's getting beat up high because he's so big. <laughs> um, but I, I think they're... I think they're... Uh, is a lot that goes goes into it. I felt last season, and, and look, I'm not a I'm not a goalie coach. Um, I'm not here saying this is what it is, but I felt like a ton last year he was off his angles. It, it looked like he was favoring his glove side a lot more, especially when someone was coming down that right wing, right? And he's a left glove. Feels like he really, really favors that left side and that far side of the net is really open. I, I think his angles were really, really off and uh, were, were quite poor um, at, at some point. And maybe it, it also is due to the fact that he's going down too early um, and he's not being patient enough. And obviously players are beating him up high. You're going to get beat, uh, of course. But look, if, if Otter gets it back up to 87%, 86% saves high blocker, I mean, that's a completely 
completely different story. So I, I found that fascinating um, w- when you put it into a more tangible data set because a, a lot of you picked up on this last year and, and credit to the Locked On Stars listeners picked it up before even I really kind of noticed it. It just seemed like he's getting beat up high a ton. And then you have some statistics to b- back it up. It goes, wow, like that's really fascinating. So 85 goals allowed high blocker high glove compared to, tw- uh, to compared to 59 and 22 23 so can they fix that that's the big question i think because he's such a big guy he moves well he's going to be fine down low he closes it up quite a bit um he he, he can have have some funky games uh, of course and Last year was the first season where it was consistent that he was letting in like those flute goals. I feel like for the first three seasons, you never saw him give up like that funky goal. It's like, okay, like you you have to stop that. And then last year, just every few games or so just gave up an awful goal. It's like, you you have to stop that. Uh, He had a lot of head scratchers. So hopefully that won't be the case next season, but as I, as I shared with you early earlier, I um I have this feeling this this could be the year of the otter. He has himself a career year going into a contract year, um, and, and he puts together his best season with the Dallas Stars, and, and that could be tough. Uh, I mean, he's had some good years: nine nineteen save percentage, two point thirty seven goals against average in twenty two twenty three. But hey, if you want to be the carry prices the Mark Andres, the Vasilevsky, and that's sort of a standard I'm I'm holding him to because I think he has that potential. Can you go up from here? Um, and uh, we're, we're certainly going to find out. So um, I, I'm intrigued for next season. Let me know. Let me know where you would put him in your top 10 list amongst NHL goalies. Uh, is that really surprising to hear that he got beat up high as much as he did last season? Or does that kind of confirm what you thought it was like, man, he's just getting beat a ton up high and something needs to change. Right. So um, we'll see how it all plays out. He'll be an interesting story. And you have to take in to account. Wedgwood's not here anymore. So that partnership's not there. Maybe that helps him in the long run. Maybe it doesn't. We'll find out. Cannot wait. We're about a month and a half away from training camp, baby. And uh, everything's uh, about to get rolling again. Thank you for all the love and support on the last few videos. Please hit subscribe, like, drop a comment below. And um, as always, have a great day. Have a great Friday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll see you on Monday. So long, Stars fans.